Good morning. Good morning. It's good to be together on this, the Lord's Day. We have a slightly different service this morning. If this is your first time in this building, this isn't indicative of how everything normally goes. Uh, we are going to have an unrehearsed nativity that the young people are going to take part in. Ellie's going to narrate it. There is the option of some audience participation some words to say that will appear on the screen at various times. If you don't want to join in, you absolutely don't have to. However, the more people that do join in, the less people notice that they're joining in, if you bear with me. We're going to pray. Young people, I am so glad you're here. It's great. And we look forward to you being here. And I love whoever it is that's got bells. <laughs> that's Naomi, not a young person. Um, <laughs> Let's, let's pray. Father God, I thank you that we gather together. I thank you that we come into this place. Lord, may we give glory to you today. May we be able to honour and worship you. I thank you that these young people are here and willing to be involved. Lord, but help us all to listen. Help us all to take in your word when we look into it uh, later on. Lord, may you really speak to each and every one of us and challenge us to think carefully about you today. Uh, Father God, we pray for those that aren't here, those that are unwell, those that are um, in care homes, those that uh, don't come out in the cold. Uh, Lord, we just pray that you will enable them to feel a part of our fellowship uh, from a distance. Lord, we pray for those here uh, today who are unwell, who need uh, extra measure of comfort and peace and um, healing. And Lord, may you make your presence very well known to them. But now I pray that you will take away the distractions of our lives, take away the distractions of our minds, and help us to focus upon our worship of the Lord Jesus Christ as he came to this earth as a baby to grow into a man who was the saviour of all mankind. Amen. Um, we're going to start by singing. We're going to sing the entire of this carol. 
It's, O come, all ye faithful, joyful and triumphant. By definition, you can't sing it without being joyful. So make a joyful noise to the Lord. O come, all ye faithful. going to hand over to Ellie who is going to narrate us through the rest of uh, this nativity <laughs> uh, yeah yeah All right. okay welcome <laughs> Hopefully this will all go well, and please join in so that I don't look daft standing up here on my own. So it says, today's nativity is all about the greatest journey ever. I'll be retelling the Christmas story, and we'll be going on a Christmas journey together, but I will need help from all of you. When I say each of these words, I need you to join in with an action. Hopefully they will be on the, on there, no. <laughs> there we go. So. When we say journey, we just march. You don't have to stand, you can do it while sitting. Uh, big one, we stretch out our arms as wide as we can. 
Uh oh or oh no, gasp and put your hand over your mouth. And then can't, we shake our head and wag our finger. Okay, so hopefully that will all go well. We are going, I'm going to read, uh, we're going to have a few songs in between and at that point the children will make their way to the stage, different children at different times, hopefully they all know what they are. If they're feeling brave, they're going to travel all the way around the church and then come up on the stage without knocking over any guitar or music stands, um, but it's up to them, just enjoy it. So, in this story, there are four special journeys that happened over 2000 years ago. Mary and Joseph, the wise men, and even the shepherds all traveled a long way to celebrate the birth of Jesus. Today, we're going to follow in their footsteps and travel these journeys too. Right, let's go. There was a couple called Joseph and Mary. They went on a journey all the way to Bethlehem. Oh, and then this bit, we can all say together if you're feeling like you want to. We're going on a journey. It's going to be a big one. All the way to Bethlehem, because Caesar wants to count us. Uh-oh, Romans, tall, scary Romans. And then everybody, we can't jump over them. We can't crawl under them. Oh no, we'll have to walk between them. Steppity step, walkity walk, steppity step. They went together on their journey. Soon they were going to marry and they were going to be a family because Mary was having a baby. And now we're going to sing just one verse, I think of O Little Town of Bethlehem, and Mary and Joseph are going to make their way around the church and up on the stage and stand behind the crib. Perfect. They do it whilst they're playing, whilst the song's going on, so... <laughs> Joseph and Mary stay. Everyone, hopefully, we're going on a journey. It's going to be a big one. Got to find a place to stay because Mary's having a baby. Uh oh, no bed, no big bouncy bed. And then everyone, we can't stay in a hotel. We can't stay in a spare room. Oh no. We'll have to sleep with the animals. Eat or woof, eat or ba, eat or nay. <laughs> That's the best I can do, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> there was no room for them in the inn. So Mary wrapped the baby in strips of cloth and found a manger to lay him in. And now any angels are gonna come up onto the stage and we're gonna sing away in a manger.
shepherds. It happened in a field nearby. The angel told them about the baby, so they went to see with their own eyes. Everyone. We're going on a journey. It's going to be a big one. An angel came to see us, told us of a saviour. So we're going to welcome him. We'll find him in a manger. Uh-oh, sheep poo. Smelly, stinky poo. Everyone. We can't fly over it. We can't tiptoe round it. Oh no. We'll have to tread on it. Tread squelch, tread squelch, tread squelch. They rushed off to find the baby and everyone was amazed. It was just as the angels said and they gave God their praise. And we're going to sing two verses, I think, of While Shepherds Watched, Whilst Our Shepherd and Sheep Come to the Stage. <laughs>
It's been a long journey for Mary and Joseph. It's been a long journey for the shepherds. It's been a long journey for the wise men. And then everyone, we've gone on a journey, but we're so glad we did. We met someone special, but who was it? Big brown eyes and big cheeks, 10 tiny toes on two tiny feet. Everyone, why? It's Jesus. Quick, tell everyone. Going home another way, humpty hump, floppity clop, humpty hump. Back through the sheep poo, tread squelch, tread squelch, tread squelch. Saying so long to the animals, eat or woof, eat or ba, eat or nay. Mind the Romans, stepity step, walkity walk, stepity step, and finally we're home. You know, Jesus went on a journey. It really was the biggest one. All the way from heaven, because he came to save us. He came to live on earth with us, because he loves us very much. He was a child and had to learn things just as we do, only he never did anything wrong. When he grew up, he did amazing things. He did many miracles and taught the people about God. <coughs> he even brought people back from the dead. Only God can do that. And then when he was put to death on a cross, he did it because he loved us and to save us from our sins. But he didn't stay dead. Now Jesus is alive again. His story hasn't ended. Jesus came on a journey. It really is the greatest one. And with this, we're going to finish one last song, I think. And after this, the children can have a big clap.
that's better. Thank you uh, to all of the children who took part. Um, I know even for some of you, just standing uh, in front of people uh, takes some courage and say thank you. I did give Ellie a tub of sweets earlier, and they're not for Ellie. Uh, if you took part, even if you didn't, go and see Ellie later, and I'm sure there'll be something uh, that you can have to uh, make up for it. But thank you for joining in. And we are going to spend a little bit of time looking into God's Word this morning. Not too long. Elva, in a second, is going to come and read to us. And she is going, uh, she, well, she's going to read. Uh, and before that, I'm going to pray and then just have a little think about Jesus. So I'm going to pray once more. And then Elva, I can't see Elva. Uh, oh, you're there. Sorry. I was, Elva's going to come and read. And then we'll just have a little think about Jesus this morning. Let's pray. Lord God, we thank you once again that we've been able to be here. I do thank you for these children. It's such a privilege to be part of a church that has children in it and it gives such joy and hope. Lord, I pray that you will speak to each and every one of them today. May the things that they have just uh, been a part of be very real to them. Lord, we thank you that we can worship uh, the Lord Jesus Christ, not because he came as a baby, but because of what he went on to do. As Ellie said, he lived a perfect life and went on to give up that life for our freedom and therefore is so worthy of all our worship and praise. Father God, I do pray that you will help us to worship wholeheartedly and sincerely. Help us to truly uh, be grateful for the work done upon the cross. Lord God, as I've already prayed, I do pray for those that are unwell, those that aren't with us. But Lord, we all have difficulties that we face day in, day out. And I pray that we will be able to turn to you through every challenge, through every strife. Lord, whether we're young, whether we're less young, we will all have challenges, we will all have difficulties. And may we seek to, do them by your, uh, to, to get through them by your strength rather than our own. May we learn to lean and rely upon you, our Heavenly Father. Lord, if we're not yet trusting you as our Saviour, may we, as our, as our King, sorry, and the Lord Jesus as our Saviour, may we think about that carefully today. May we, may we think carefully why we don't uh, trust you. And Lord, may you speak to us all. Just reveal truths about you to us. I pray. In Christ's name I ask it. Amen. Elva is going to come and read. Now I found where Elva is. Uh, from 1 John chapter 5 which at first glance may not seem like the most Christmassy of readings. Uh, hopefully, within the next 10, 15 minutes, we'll all understand why. Elva, 1 John chapter 5. One John chapter five, beginning at verse six to twelve. This is he who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ, not by the water alone, but by the water and the blood. And the Spirit is the one who testifies, because the Spirit is the truth. For there are three that testifies, the Spirit and the water and the blood and these three agree if he receives the testimony of men the testimony of god is greater for this is the testimony of god that he has borne concerning his son whoever believes in the son of god has the testimony has the testimony in himself whoever does not believe god has made him a liar because he has not believed in the testimony that God has borne concerning his son. And this is the testimony that God gave us eternal life. And this life is in his son. Whoever has the son has life. Whoever does not have the son of God does not have life. Thank you, Elva. 
Christmas is surely about one thing, but it's very easy to get distracted. It can be easy to get distracted by trees and jumpers and all sorts of other bright things. It can even be easy to get distracted by us questioning uh, the lyrics of Christmas carols. Yesterday morning we talked about that one in Away in a Manger, No Crying He Makes, uh, which is a particular uh, line of mine. I genuinely, for 20 years, thought Jesus didn't cry. Um, doesn't tell us that anywhere in Scripture. Or even that every nativity have the wise men going near to uh, the stable, which we assume wasn't the case. The wise men visited Jesus at Nazareth. It's easy to get distracted in life by so many things. But, at Christmas there should be one great focus. And what should that one great focus be? Samuel. Jesus. Well done, Samuel. Thank you. But this morning, I want to talk about some gifts, some presents. The only thing is, those presents are all about Jesus. They are all about Jesus. Bear with me one second, a bit of remedial work. There we go. They are all about Jesus. And they are all actually things that Jesus brought. Five different gifts, five things that Jesus brought. Can anyone, I'm assuming younger people, don't know, can any of you see any presents on the platform this morning? Raymer, can you see one? Now you can't unwrap them because they're made of plastic. There's, there's a few, I've said five given it away already. Rayma, come and turn open over the biggest one. We, we start with the biggest present. That's common sense, yes? Turn it over. Is there something inside it? There is. There's some, a bit of paper. You're welcome. Thank you. And that bit of paper says light. Now, you might think I haven't thought all of this through this morning, but I did try. If you're trying to watch at home and I'm moving out of camera shot every 10 seconds, I do apologise. But one thing that Jesus brought is, ah, oh no, light. Need two pegs, two pegs every time. Light. Wrong way. No, that was the right way. Come on, Tom. Ah, uh, it's light. We're going to roll with that. Light. Pardon? Yeah, I mean, if you can, if you want. Ellie's, Ellie's asking if I need help. It's not a good sign. Um, <laughs> anyway, please don't fall. Jesus brought light. And actually, one verse in the Bible, John chapter 8, verse 12, says just that. Jesus spoke to them saying... <laughs> right, I'll do it, I'll do it. You go away, go away. <laughs> this, is, this, bit, this is the bit that's supposed to be structured and thought through. There we go. <laughs> Thank you, Robin. I'll, I'll work on the rest. Um, anyway, John chapter 8, verse 12. Let's focus back. John chapter 8, verse 12 says, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. And this is something wonderful that Jesus brought. He brought light. Have any of you ever been entirely lost in the dark? All scared, all alone. I, I used to do night hikes when I was in Scouts, and it was always dark. Once we found our way back because we found the glove that I lost at the very start of the walk, which was a wonderful pre-planned breadcrumb to, to lose to be able to find that glove. What you need when it's dark is light. Light shows you where to go. Do we agree? I hope so. The Bible portrays, tells us that people on this world are a bit like we're just lost in the dark. We don't know where we're going. We try and do our own thing. We try and go where, we go, go where we're going in our own way. But Jesus came and he brought light because he showed us the way. He showed us so many things. He showed us how to live. He showed us how to be loving. But he also showed us the way to heaven. The way to heaven is found through him. 
People try and make themselves great. They try and live as long as they possibly can in their own strength. They try and do all sorts of things. There's a documentary, one of the Hemsworth or Liam, or I don't know, the one that plays Thor in the Avengers films, one of those actors, did a, has done a documentary about six different ways to try and make his life longer. One of them involved freezing himself in ice baths and things. One of them was trying to learn a game of memory. And all things that sound like torture to me. But Jesus came and he showed us the way to eternal life. He showed us the way. And it's by trusting in him. He came into a dark world like a bright blazing light. He has the light of life. He shows us how to have the perfect life and how to have a never-ending life. When you think about Christmas, think about the gift of light. Jesus is that light. Jesus came to bring something else. Go on, Artorius. No, don't, don't tell me. You've got to find it. Go and um, have a look in the second biggest present. It's the white one. If you turn it upside down, I hope it is still there. I did, our sheep was um, enjoying. There we go. Thank you. Ooh, this one. Are you going to read it to us, Arturus? Can you read it? Peace. Jesus, my humble assistant, Jesus brought peace. We find a wonderful verse in Philippians. Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 and 7 says this. Do not be anxious about anything. In everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And then are you ready for this? And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. There is a peace of God that no one truly understands. But when we know Jesus, when we love and trust him, there is a great peace that comes from it. There's two types of peace, actually. One, man and God being brought back together. That's true peace. But even in ourselves, we can know a great sense of peace through Jesus. If we worry about things, knowing that we have the Lord Jesus Christ, in heaven, listening, ready to take our prayers to God, brings us a great assurance, a great sense of peace. Whenever we face troubles, knowing that one day they will end and we can go to live with Christ victorious forever, brings us a great sense of peace. Christ came and brought peace to the world. The world, as we look at it at the moment, isn't always that peaceful. There's things that we don't like that go on but we can look ahead to a time when there will be full peace, when there will be no pain or suffering or horrible things. All will be wonderful. True peace. Jesus came to bring peace. These are already better presents than anything anyone will find under their tree. But we move on, we're moving. Three more. I've got, there's one more present on the platform for someone to up, turn upside down. Um, Samuel, have you done one yet? Go on then. The white, no, the green one, the smallest one. The green one. Oh, you're just fixing that one. Sorry. The green one. Bit of paper inside it. You're going to give it to me? I hope you are. There we go. Thank you, buddy. Who knows what this says? Joy. Well done. Joy. There's a man called Peter, and he wrote a book. And in his book, one, the first one, his letter, sorry, the first one he wrote, 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse 8 to 9, though you have not seen him, you love him, though you do not now see him, you believe in him, and rejoice with joy that is inexpressible and filled with glory. You have a joy that you can't truly explain. It's not expressible. You can't you can't say it with words. There is just, upon knowing Christ, a deep, wonderful joy. I'm not saying that I'm happy all the time. I'm not saying that I'm a, an advert for toothpaste with a big smile in every moment of my life. There's times where we might be sad, but we still have a deeper happiness. We call it joy, a sense of joy. 
in knowing Christ. It always makes me sad when people are miserable. And some people seem so unfulfilled, unsatisfied with life. Yet knowing Christ gives us a great sense of joy. It gives us security. It, it helps us to know where we're going. It answers so many questions that we might have. But above all, we know, as I've already talked about with peace, whatever situation we find ourselves in, we have someone on our side. However hard life gets, we know that something ahead is much better. Knowing the Lord Jesus Christ, trusting in him as our saviour, gives us great joy. If you don't believe me, well, I can't force you to. But there's a, a verse in Psalms that says, taste and see that the Lord is good. Put your faith in Christ, trust in him, and he won't leave you joyless. There will be an inexpressible joy, an uncomprehensible, an ununderstandable joy in your life. Three things so far. Two more to go, and they are the shortest two. You're doing well so far, children. Thank you. We've had light, peace, joy. And now we have one more. There, yes, I've, I was told your name half an hour ago. Savvy, are you going to come and find the... There's one more that's obvious. Come here. It's not in a present because we ran out. But when you can't be bothered to wrap things, you put them in a bag. Are you going to open it for me? Can we take it out? You're going to open it up? How good you're reading. What does it say? Life. Life. Thank you, Savvy. Knowing Jesus brings life. Now, you might think that's a bit of a strange thing for me to say. We're all sitting here. We're alive this morning. We have life. And yes, that is true. We are alive. But we don't have a full life. There is something more to come. In 1 John, chapter 5 and verse 11, as Elva read to us, or at least I hope Elva read to us if I sent her the right reference last night, 1 John, chapter 5 and verse 11 says, this is the testimony God gave us eternal life. And this life is in his Son. God gave us a life that never, ever ends. Yes, our bodies end, but our spirit, our soul lives on. And in fact, the Bible tells us that in heaven we get given a new body. Um, this life is in Jesus. Ultimately, we're celebrating a baby today, aren't we? But we know that that baby grew up to be a man who gave his life. He gave his life on a cross so that we could have eternal life. What a wonderful gift that is. I wonder how expensive it would be to give someone eternal life. If I had five pounds in my wallet, I wonder how much extra life I could buy you. Nothing. If I had billions of pounds, how much longer could I make your life? Possibly a little bit with the best healthcare and dentistry that money can offer. But... I can't ever give anyone eternal life. Who can? God through Jesus. If we're trusting in him, he gives us eternal life. A life that never ends. How good is that? Yes, we might be alive today, but we cannot have eternal life. Life that never ends without Jesus. And this brings us to the last present. The last gift that I'm mentioning that Jesus brought, you could argue that there are an, an, an innumerable list of things that Jesus brought, but the last one today. Can anyone see another present on the platform? Can you see, I've completely forgotten your name. I want to say Sean. I, there we go, Sean. Can you see one? Can you see another present on the platform? Pardon? Yeah? Are you going to come and show it to me? You don't have to. I mean, you are a wise man, so you should be able to work it out. Can you see it? Come here, Sean. Your fingers on the chair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's fine. Bring it here. 
Bring the whole lot here. There we go. Sean's found it. Thank you. If you were looking at your Christmas tree or whatever you find, if I put this here and they were actually real presents, not bits of paper, which one would you pick? Would you pick the cardboard box, Sean? You would? Okay. Thank you. That was the answer I wasn't expecting. Go and sit down, Sean. Give him that. I don't think many people would pick a ripped open Amazon, sorry, Amazon box, would they? Surely you'd pick the big red one with the lights on it and the shiny sparkles. Sean obviously knows there's something up, and uh, he's far wiser than I, uh, I am. But in this one, there's something even greater. The greatest gift of all that Jesus could bring, and that is himself. Jesus brought himself. Why did I put it in the plainest packaging? Partly because I ran out of other things to put it in. But secondly, it's a bit of a metaphor. You see, Jesus came to this earth. He didn't look special. He didn't look particularly grand. In fact, we've thought about it this morning. Jesus came to this earth just as a normal person and not even a rich normal person. He came as a carpenter's son. He came and was born in a stable. Now, we sometimes think that looks really glorious, and our, our um, Christmas cards have a nice nativity with a camel just looking happy at Jesus and a sheep just there. We all know what sheep are like. Sheep, I think, are the smelliest uh, animal known to, to humankind. And Jesus was born into the, the humblest of positions. But he was the greatest thing that has ever come to earth. And he gave himself. What do I mean by that? Well, it says in John chapter 3, verse 16. I've said he gave himself, but then this verse says that God gave him. Just, just roll with the semantics there, sorry. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son. He sent his son here to this earth and that son, Jesus, died on a cross. He left the most wonderful place to ever live, heaven, and he came to earth. He gave himself so that we can have eternal life. You might think I'm just repeating everything I've already said and I kind of am because none of the other things are possible without Jesus giving himself coming as the greatest gift to mankind so that anyone who believes in him will have eternal life, know true peace and joy and see the light that is hidden from so many people. I wonder, you might not get presents this year, you might get presents, I don't know what different households do. But if you do, remember, no matter what you get, nothing is greater than the Lord Jesus Christ and the wonderful things that he brought when he came to this earth at Christmas. What a great God we have. I spoke for a bit longer than I expected, sorry. I'm going to pray and then we're going to sing one more song, which is Hark the Herald Angels Sing. Let's pray. Father God, I thank you uh, for your wonderful words. I thank you for how good your son is. I thank you for the great gift that we had uh, sent to earth when he came as a baby, and I thank you for all that he grew up to be. Help us to trust in him, I pray. In Christ's name I ask it. Amen. Amen. Hark the herald angels sing, glory to the newborn king. And we're singing the whole thing. Four verses? Three? Three verses. A bit of a chorus. Hark the herald angels sing.
Father God, we've just sung glory to the newborn King. May all we do give glory to you and to your Son. May we trust the work of the Holy Spirit in our lives. And may we look forward to that glorious day when we meet you face to face, the start of our eternal life, a life with you in perfection. May we know the joy and peace that comes from you. And may we look to your Son as the light to guide us through this world. In Christ's name I ask it. Amen. Amen. If uh, you don't know, we will have a cup of tea and or coffee or squash and biscuits will be served, I think, in the back hall, which is just through there. And we have a service tonight, which will have communion. Uh, we should have had communion this morning, but we'll have it tonight. And on Sunday, Christmas Day, we are here at 10.30 uh, in the morning. If, children, you've already had a present by that time, feel free to bring it along and there might be a chance to show it off. Uh, we shall see. And we have a service at 6 p.m. on Christmas Day as well. Both the next two evening services, tonight and next week, we are going to have a pick a carol evening from a list um, of about 25 carols, just to make it more of a challenge for those playing instruments so they don't know what to practice. Uh, that's it from me. Jan was about to play and I interrupted. Thank you, Jan. Sorry.